All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about representations of functions of, as power series. And the way we're going to do these is we're actually going to manipulate the power series representation for the function 1 over 1 minus x. And it turns out you can write 1 over 1 minus x as the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of x raised to the n power. But x, um, the absolute value of x has to be less than 1. Okay. You could also go about doing these problems we're about to do using the Taylor series and Maclaurin series stuff, but this way is a little bit more efficient. Okay. And this is going to be a common trick. You'll come up with a power series representation for one function. You'll manipulate that to come up with other power series representations. Okay. So in this case, we have the, the idea of where this formula is coming from is you can think about like a geometric series. Remember, a geometric series, you start with some number, then you multiply that by something to get the successive terms. So here we're multiplying by x, by x, by x, by x to get 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. If you remember the sum of a geometric formula, it's the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. The common ratio being what we multiply by, in this case, x. So the summation is just a more compact way of writing all of these terms out. And remember, a geometric series converges, the interval, well, it converges if this ratio, the absolute value of it's less than 1. So now our interval of convergence is going to be those x values where the absolute value of x is less than 1. So just kind of a way to remember this if you remember geometric series as opposed to just, you know, having to memorize some other completely random formula. So I've got three examples here on the first page, and then I've got two others, so we'll do quite a few here. The important thing to notice is this form. We want it to be 1 over 1 minus something. Whatever we're subtracting away, all you have to do is put that to the n power, and then that becomes also, you plug that inside the bars, the absolute value, make it less than 1, that'll give you your interval of convergence. So we'll find power series representations and also intervals of convergence here. Okay, so for my first one here, we have 1 over 1 plus x. I need this form 1 over 1 minus something. Well, I can simply write that as negative x. 1 minus negative x is positive x. And then, well, I've now got that good form that simply becomes from n equals 0 to infinity of negative x raised to the n power. And now you've got a power series representation for 1 over 1 plus x. Again, the absolute value of negative x needs to be smaller than 1, but the absolute value of negative x is equivalent to just plain old absolute value of x smaller than 1. You can factor out the negative 1 in absolute value, but the absolute value of negative 1 is just positive 1. So we'll simply get that x needs to be again between positive 1 and negative 1. That'll be your interval of convergence. Okay, so here's my next example down here, 1 over 1 minus x cubed. Okay, we've already got it in this good form where we're subtracting something away. Okay, so we're just subtracting away this x to the third power. So again, all I have to do is once I have it in this good form, write it from n equals 0 to infinity, it says whatever I'm subtracting away, I simply raise that to the nth power. Well, in this case, I'm subtracting away x to the third. Okay, and sometimes, you know, you'll see them rewrite this as n equals 0 to infinity of x to the 3n. Okay, same thing. This is going to help us. We're going to use this to get our interval of convergence. So it says the absolute value of x cubed needs to be smaller than 1. Okay, you can take the cube root, basically. And again, you'll basically just get the absolute value of x needs to be less than 1. So again, you'll get this interval of convergence that x needs to be between negative 1 and positive 1. That will be your interval of convergence. Okay, so let me do this last one here. Well, this last one on this page. I've got 1 over 1 plus 9x squared. Again, I'm going to write that as 1 over 1 minus something. So in this case, it'll be negative. 9x squared. And again, it says I've got it in this good form, 1 over 1 minus something. All I have to do is now subtract that away. 
So I'll have n equals 0 to infinity. I'll have negative 9 x squared raised to the nth power. And again, now you've got a power series representation for this function. Um, same idea, now we need negative 9 x squared, the absolute value of that, to be smaller than 1. You can factor out the negative 9, but it actually comes out as a positive 9. So you can divide both sides by 9, and we'll get 1 ninth. And the absolute value of some number, so that we square it, we need that to be smaller than 1 ninth. That's going to correspond to x values between negative one third and positive one third. Okay, so this will be your interval of convergence again for that power series representation. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple others here. So now I have this function um, x over 4x plus 1. What I'm going to do here, so I'm just going to now start talking about how to rewrite them um, so I don't run out of time doing these inequalities. Um, I'm going to pull the x out front on top, and then I'm just going to write this as 1 over, I could write this as 1 plus 4x. All right, well, the only thing I'm going to mess with is I'm just going to manipulate this stuff on the inside to make it again into this good form. So I'll have x times 1 over 1 minus negative 4x. Okay, so now I have the stuff on the inside in this good form, 1 over 1 minus something. You simply have x out front, summation from n equals 0 to infinity. Whatever's on the inside, Whatever I'm subtracting away, that's what goes inside. So I'll have negative 4x to the n power. And again, I can now rewrite this a little more efficiently. So my x is going to be out front still. n equals 0 to infinity. I could make this negative 4 to the n power, x to the n power. And now the idea, this x that's out front, you can just multiply it actually back inside. So if you multiply this x back inside, well, I'll have an extra x inside of here. So I'll pull him from outside to inside. And that's going to give me simply x to the n plus first power. And again, there's a power series representation for um, x over 4x plus 1. All right, let's do one other one here, maybe one a little trickier. So now we have the same idea, x over 9 plus x squared. I'm going to start off by doing the same thing. I'm going to pull the x out front. Now I've got 1 over 9 plus x squared. And this is where you want to be careful. Um, you need a 1 over 1 um, minus something. So the first thing I'm going to do, I notice there's a 9 in here. I'm going to make this into a 1. And the way I'm going to make that into a 1 is by factoring a 9 out from the denominator. So we have to be a little careful with our algebra here. But notice if I pull a 9 out, I can write the denominator as 9 plus, well, 9 times 1 plus x squared over 9. If I distribute the 9, I'll get 9. The 9s will cancel out, and I will get back to this um, 9 plus x squared. So I can pull the 9 out front, and I'll have x over 9. And then I'm going to have, I'll be left with 1 plus x squared over 9. But I'm going to write that as negative, as 1 minus negative x squared over 9. OK, and again, now I've got this good form. I've got 1 over 1 minus something. My x over 9 is just going to be hanging out front. I'll have from n equals 0 to infinity. Inside the bars will be negative x squared over 9 raised to the n power. And I'm about to run out of time here. So you could rewrite this as n equals 0 to infinity. I could write the negative as negative 1 to the n. I would have 9 to the n in the denominator, but when I multiply this extra 9 in, I'll get 9 to the n plus 1. I'll have x to the 2n. If I multiply by the x on top, I'll get x to the 2n plus 1. 
So sorry for doing this last one uh, a little fast here. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email about these. I'll be happy to try to answer them for you.